What's going on guys, my name is Suboptimal and in this video we'll go over how you can set up your Visual Studio Code environment so that you can write GLSL shaders with autocomplete, syntax highlighting, and a visual display. But first, let's start off with a quick introduction about shaders. According to Wikipedia, a shader is a computer program that calculates the levels of light darkness, and color when rendering a 2D or 3D scene. The first example is in game dev. So in game dev, shaders are pretty much essential. This is the same scene in Minecraft, but on the top left, you've got shaders enabled, and on the bottom right, you don't have shaders. So as you can clearly see, the one on the top left looks a lot better. Lighting going on here, you've got shadows, you've got better clouds, and you've got reflections in the water. You know, all that is done through shaders. So point is, Shaders are really useful in games, but also shaders are useful in social media platforms. So whenever you post a picture and you want to edit a picture and add some filters to it, that's basically a shader on the background. Here I've pulled up more examples just to sort of show it live. This is the TikTok Effect House website where they're showing you different types of effects that you can create. And a lot of these are just straight up shaders. So the point I'm trying to convey here is that writing shaders is a really useful skill. And of course, being able to write shaders directly in VS Code is really the best way to get started. Let's jump right in. So the first extension that I wanna go over is the WebGL GLSL editor extension. So this is the extension that is going to add um, highlighting and suggestions to your GLSL files. So here I've got a simple little um, shader file open and this has the .frag extension. So there are three separate extensions that you can use, .frag, .glsl, or .vert for vertex files. And basically, once you install this, I've already installed it, so I'm just gonna enable it. Once you've enabled it, it's going to detect all these types of files and it's gonna give you auto suggestions and autocomplete. So as soon as you install it, you know, you can open up your fragment shader files and you can just start typing and you'll see all the available functions, but also, you know, what parameters those functions take in and which ones they return. And so once you've installed that extension and you've got autocomplete and all the syntax highlighting up and running, the next step is to actually be able to run these files directly in VS Code. So for that, we're going to want to search for the GLSL Canvas extension. And what this extension allows you to do is, I guess I'll just show it right over here. Once you install it, you can go to your any of your fragment shader files. You can press Command Shift P to open up the command prompt for VS Code. You should see this thing pop up if you search for GLSO. If you press enter, you'll see the fragment shader is gonna get displayed on the right over here. And now I just wanna go over some settings that I like to use with these two extensions. Now the first one is I like to disable refresh on change. So by default, the GLSL canvas enables refresh on save and refresh on change. Right here, I have the distance function. Now if I delete it and I start typing, you'll notice here that there's a bunch of errors. Now I don't like seeing these errors and I only like the right side of the screen to refresh once I've saved my file. So I like to go in here and set refresh on change to false. Last thing I like to do is update the default formatter for a specific set of files. So my VS code is using the prettier formatter and obviously uh, using prettier won't work. What you're gonna want to do is to add these settings for these specific file extensions. And here what I'm saying is if I am either in a GLSO or fragment or vertex file, use the WebGL editor formatter as the default. So if, for example, I have sort of formatted this incorrectly, like so, and I save the file, you'll notice that VS Code automatically formats the file. I guess the main thing here is to just play around with some of these settings until you find something that is comfortable for you. And yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have a better understanding of how you can write GLSL shaders directly in VS Code. If you enjoyed the video, then I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.